The following transmission contains unencrypted instances of explicit language. Shall we begin? Smiley is a suspicious person. You won't know who to trust. Welcome back, fellow spy nerds, to another episode of Spies Like Us podcast, the podcast where we discuss the representation of tradecraft on screens, large and small. With me, as always, is David. What up? What are we going to talk about today, David? We're talking about bullets of Beijing. Uh, our, our final? Are, are we doing the next one, or are we are we stopping here? <laughs> I think we're. I, I'm getting off the train. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. We're. Uh, this will conclude our Palmer Fest. Uh, we had told everybody we were going to do uh, Midnight in St. Petersburg. Oh, right. I, but, I do need to explain that, don't I? Yeah, but we actually. But, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are we going to talk about? We're talking about Bullets of Beijing. All right. That is a. Uh, Harry Palmer film. It's like a revival. Sort. It was a, a, a short-lived revival of the Harry Palmer franchise in the 90s. Um, it is true. For a while, we had said we were going to do uh, Midnight in St. Saint, Saint Petersburg, which is the final film uh, in the in the Palmer-verse. Um, <laughs> but what happened was I got myself a copy of the movie and I got about two thirds of the way through it, taking notes and everything before I realized it was in fact bullet to Beijing. Yeah. There's no and, title uh, card. Oh, uh, that's true. Um, well see actually on my copy, there was a title card and you know what oh. it said? Yeah. <laughs> it said, uh, midnight in St. Petersburg. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> Um, I think it was like plastered on or something. I think you got um, a bootleg copy. Uh, it was a weird, yeah, it was like the main language was Italian and stuff, but okay. <laughs> there's a reason, there's a reason though. Check it out. There's a reason I was able to get so far through the movie. Cause I'm also looking at wiki. I'm writing down the, the names of the people in the cast and stuff. Um, but the two movies are kind of like a, they're, they're a, they're a real pair. Uh, there are a lot of characters that are carried over between the two movies and a lot of events in one movie that affect the events in the other. So that's that's how I was able to get so far into it. Also, it just, uh, in retrospect, now understanding that, it would be like us trying to talk about the two towers without talking about Fellowship of the Ring, if, right. if you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah, um, no, that makes a lot of sense. It, well, that's why it, I'm like, maybe we should, maybe we should carry it over. <laughs> We still can. We still could make that decision. Yeah. The next movie has not been decided, so it could be Midnight in St. St. Petersburg. I'm probably going to vote against, but okay. we'll talk more <laughs> about that uh, okay. online. Uh, this is... Uh, okay, so it's a 1995 film produced in England where it did have a theatrical release, but released only on Showtime Network in the U.S. So... I mean, this has been sold to me as a made-for-TV movie. And I did notice that Showtime executives were the first listed in the end credits. But IMDb tells us this was originally meant for a worldwide theatrical release, but deemed not good enough. <laughs> David, we've talked a little bit about this before. What's happening in the mid-90s in spy movies? They're going crazy on uh, the over-the-top action. Uh, that's when we had GoldenEye and Mission Impossible. And it's just explosions and car chases and planes and motorcycles and machine there's guns. A, there's a real transition into what I think we still think of as the modern action spy movie. Uh -huh. uh, I think Mission Impossible is really where that starts. Uh, it'll keep going with uh, uh, Born Identity, Ronin. Um, there's another important one I think I'm, I'm missing. But, uh, you know, these are the movies that killed Bond, basically, yeah. uh, that we got in the mid to late 90s. And this in particular being set up to, to go in for 1995, um, you know, it's it's I think it's because of the successes of 
those similar movies in a similar vein that they made the decision we can't put this in theaters we'll look like idiots yeah uh, we have to move this to tv so the that gives us i think an interesting animal here where okay so let's say it was a made for tv movie if you're watching it you would be like fuck this is really high budget made for television um you know even though it like, was pretty trying- high budget there, there, there was a boat chase and quite a few car accidents, <clears throat> right? They drove There's cars an, into the middle of a train station. Sure. What? Uh, <laughs> what? What movie? What movie did uh, did you um, did this movie uh, call to mind most to you? Oh, are you talking about the travel part of the middle part of the movie? Yeah, uh-huh. it was like watching planes, trains, and automobiles. I was waiting for like John Candy to jump out and be like, "Welcome to Wichita," right? But that never happens. I think most of the where I see most of the budget going is just into the the location filming. Like they're not doing they're not doing this stuff on you know studio lots. Um, I don't I don't know if they I don't know if they actually went to. I think they did. I think the Siberia stuff is filmed in Siberia. I know the St. Petersburg stuff is filmed in St. Petersburg. Yeah. Um, there was a, a review I saw where someone said they loved this movie so much just because, like, they had been a student in St. Petersburg and just the way the city is portrayed was very nostalgic to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the location filming in, and I don't just mean like, I mean, yeah, you got to get. The whole crew, you got to fly the whole crew out there. You know, you got to do a whole bunch of stuff to do real location filming. And there's a lot done in this. And I think it's done really well. Uh, I really feel St. Petersburg. I really feel Siberia. Um, these are like just the the sense of location and sense of place, I think, is uh, the main star of the film for me. Um, so... Showtime now at that time Showtime was of course uh like a premier cable channel that you had to pay extra for um so they were like kind of I guess I don't know if HBO was doing original stuff yet um but they would start doing that that soon um but yeah they they slapped it on TV they did give it screens in Britain and either way the films go to video source in 1997 um which is a pretty fast turnaround for that time. You know, like these days we see stuff go, you know, from the movie theaters to streaming, you know, they're arguing about months, you know, it used to be like, you know, two, even just two years used to be kind of a short turnaround Mm -hmm. for that kind of stuff. If I remember uh, correctly, Um, intelligence agencies, British intelligence does not make a real appearance in this film, except briefly at the beginning where they fire Palmer. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I not, not entirely being funny. I sort, I slightly thought about making firing Palmer my best trade craft of the film. <laughs> but, but we'll get, we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, so he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's a free agent here. He's an ex spook. He's not the only ex spook in the film. We also have ex KGB operatives and an ex CIA operative who turns out to be working for the DIA tangential to intelligence agencies uh russian crime lords are heavily involved north korean intelligence makes an important impact and there is a brief appearance of some chechen operatives for not any reasons at all um and it it was actually like i kind of like one of my favorite parts of this film this this moment where palmer realizes that there's like there's basically an ex MI6 guy, an ex-KGB guy, and an ex-CIA guy, all of them working for the same guy who is a Russian proto-oligarch, uh, uh, 
uh, who is uh, turns out to be Dumbledore from the Harry Potter films. Yeah, <laughs> and he also, also that's... was in uh, Good Shepherd. He was yes, um, that's Dr. Michael Gam- Fredericks. Mm-hmm. Michael Gambon. Gambon? I'm going to say Gambon. Yeah. <laughs> Could be Gambon. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, repeat performance uh, as far as people showing up as spies in this podcast. Um, other uh, actors of note, we have Mia Sarah. Hooray. Uh, I'm happy to see her again. She's someone that you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off being like a very important film to me. Um, absolutely fell in love with her in that. Also liked her in Legend and then felt like she just kind of disappeared for, again, no reasons. I could really tell. Um, she ends up after, probably after, you know, an onset romance, uh, ends up marrying Jason Connery. Yes, that is Sean Connery's son. Did you know that? I did not know that. And apparently he's also in the movie. Yes. Um, Which is kind of... Ooh, he's Nikolai. Oh. Oh, so they played a couple as a couple. Yes. That guy doesn't look anything like Sean Connery. Well, we assume they're a couple. I don't think we actually see any romance between them. Theirs could be just a purely... Uh, Didn't they kiss? Professional relationship. Or something? After he was jelly that she was like seducing uh, Palmer or something? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was don't. just implied. And I just kind of like I, assumed. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. Even if it is, uh, you know, uh, implied or tagged in the movie, uh, it doesn't make a, like, it's not, it's not an important part of their, of their characters. Um, choo, choo, choo. Uh, so yeah, they get married after after doing this. Uh, although they are no longer married, um, I think she's currently married to uh, Jim Henson's son. I think that's right. Uh, Connery, as in this case. Oh, and let's point out it's it is it is a little weird. Uh, given that Harry Palmer was like a character fielded specifically as an anti bond, uh, creation, it's Mm kind of weird having, uh, Sean Connery's son show up playing Harry Palmer's son. Oh, wow. That is weird. A little odd there. Um, Connery's acting career, uh, I looked into it. You know, it's not anything stellar. He had a, he had, looks like kind of a good run playing Robin Hood on a, what seemed to be a kind of a popular British TV show. Uh, lots of TV, lots of B movies. Worth mentioning, he did portray Ian Fleming in a 1990 television drama called Spy Maker. Oh, wow. Life of Ian Fleming. We should definitely put that on the list. Right. Oh, well, yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll I'll drop it in there. Um, Yeah, no, that is a good idea. We haven't done any. We should do because we do like to do all types of spy movies and spy adjacent movies. So a biopic on Ian Fleming would be a nice like trophy for our case. Well, he was a spy, wasn't he? Or he worked for SAS. He, He actually served with Roald Dahl and Roald Dahl was definitely a spy. That's true. That's true. Um, Right. It's one of them, though. Like one of them, I think I forget who it is. No, it's uh, um, it's our favorite guy, Le Carre. Le Uh Carre's career in intelligence was actually very short. Yeah. Like less than two years. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, my understanding is that Fleming was an analyst and not a field agent. So he was. He was coming up with all his Bond stuff, just kind of like, you know, he's going through the reports of the field. Oh, stuff okay. And, you know, yeah, that's yeah. inspiring him to make up these uh, kind of high romance kind of action stuffs. Um, let's see. I went in and checked. Okay, so we, I mean, we believe he is supposed to be Harry Palmer's son, right? They don't say it, but it's there. No, oh, they definitely hint at it. 
uh, especially at the credits, there's the little back and forth. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure they want us to believe that he's his son. Right. Um, I did a little searching. So the idea is that, uh, you know, he was, it was a, a a honey trap operation with a KGB Mm -hmm. agent. Uh, I scoured the, the kind of the, the sources that are out there and references to see if like maybe this uh, Russian agent that Palmer had an affair with was somehow like a character, like a check to see like maybe did, did this is this something that happened maybe in funeral in berlin which we haven't watched yet mm-hmm. um he does sleep with a woman in that movie but she appears to have been a Mossad agent however and again i haven't seen this movie this is just i'm just uh pulling wiki stuff out of my butt uh she did have <laughs> numerous false passports and at some point she could have been posing as a russian spy and she might have sold that story to her son so maybe she wasn't actually russian but she just told her uh, Wait, what about sorry. our girl in uh, Billion Dollar Brain? She was working for the Russians the whole time. Uh, that's true. I don't I know don't if I think say they were in love. I don't. I don't think they ever sealed the deal either. <laughs> she pulled. A oh, knife that's right. Him. She tried to kill him. Yeah. So they never actually hooked up, right? Okay, so maybe, maybe not. All right. <laughs> um. Or perhaps maybe it's backed up by events in one of the books that was never adapted to the film. Who knows? Um, Sue Lloyd, who is the original Gene Courtney from Ipcrest File, is in this film. She's the voice on the telephone. But you don't hear her voice. Yeah, you, you just do. hear him talking. Really? <laughs> Like yeah, I that was my that was my impression after, oh, <laughs> after okay. I, I I had the same impression. I had to go back and say, oh no, she is actually talking. I do want to say though, I have a note. There's a oh. whole thing where he first of all, this movie starts out exactly like the Ipcrest file. He's got some like low-level surveillance job that's not really doing anything. He shows up to like relieve the shifts before him, and they have mm-hmm. like a British bake-off. And then the guy leaves. And then later he meets his superior and his superior tells him to shut the door. And I was like, are we really starting this movie? But anyway, when he calls Gene to have a date, they never go on the date. I I think he stood Gene up. They cut it out of the film. Oh, there was. So there was a date. Yeah. He ends actually, he ends up proposing to her and she turns him down and uh, you can find that footage in the extended cut, uh, which uh, I guess is the one that went to video or someone or maybe extended cut. I, I read one place and somewhere else I read it was in DVD extras. So it's out there somewhere. They did film her. Oh, OK, so after the assassination, but before he gets hired by Dumbledore, uh, he goes on the date. I don't know when it happens. I, it wouldn't make much sense for, I mean, you know, once he gets on the train, I mean, it's kind of. That's what I'm no saying. Time. <laughs> right. I, yeah. So I'm like, he stood up Gene. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. You're right. Oh, now, now I'm connecting the, what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah Cause that... he gets on the phone and he's like, yo, let's go on a date. Okay. See you tomorrow night. Then there's an assassination. Then he gets hired by Dumbledore and then there's no date. We didn't even get a weird uh, man who knew too much at the end. Oh, Gene, sorry, I missed that date. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one of those uh, uh, icebox moments, right? Mm, check, please. Check. Mm. <laughs> uh, Michael Caine uh, is a full 30 years have passed since Ipcrest file. Uh, helped make him a big star obviously he's come a long way by this point he's no longer the new star that everyone's talking about but an old star that everyone's heard of and everyone basically you know you say michael kane's a great actor and everybody nods and it it, it is true he is he is really good he's always michael kane though but i still i still i still really like him i just uh finished or no i just did uh batman begins and dark knight again Oh. And he is such a fucking good Alfred. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I like, and, I like, 
And as much as I like it, I didn't like the third one, the Batman or the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go back into him. that one. I liked him in that because that's when he breaks down and tells like Brucey, like you know, I can't take this anymore. You know, I just want to see you settle down with a woman and blah blah. And then there's the cafe where you know there's him and uh, Anne Hathaway, and they've uh, lived happily ever after, I guess. But he was so, great. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's <laughs> but the thing is, it's not so much that he like becomes Alfred for the movie. Right. It's more like what if Al what if Alfred was Michael fucking Kane? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty totally, good. It, it 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 totally works. Uh, Kane described making these movies as his worst professional experience ever. Oh, by the way, they were filmed back to back. Again, like like I was saying, these these kind of I mean the two uh, uh-huh. to Beijing and Midnight in Saint Petersburg. They filmed them all together, um, and he had he decided to quit acting uh, after this was over. Uh, wow. I think it was. I think it was Jack Nicholson that persuaded him to come back. I'm glad he um, didn't quit because, yeah. I mean, there's a ton of shit that I like seeing him in, especially yeah, the I Batman's. Mean, the, if the you're going to quit, well, I mean, obviously, like after a billion dollar brain, he was like, please, no more Harry Palmer movies. <laughs> <laughs> had, had to talk Salzburg out of letting him out of his contract. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Looking at this movie, I can't really see what was, I I can't see the huge stress on Michael Caine. Maybe he's just a little too old to be running around ducking behind cars and stuff. Uh Even at that point. Well, in this, he has some awkward moment. I remember when I watched this both times, especially at the beginning, I didn't believe, I mean, like the fact that he's kind of like getting older and he gets fired and he's kind of a quote unquote has been. I'm like, okay. But then you see him like run and like move. And I, I don't think it's his fault. I think it's production or directing or something. Some something went like icky or ewy. And he just has these really weird mannerisms. And it made me like not care about him until like the movie actually started, started. And then I was like, oh, okay, we got Michael Caine. This is fun. I mean, he's he's great, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, he gets in the well, car. Pinpoint, pinpoint for me when when you say when the movie really started. Like, what what point of the movie are you talking about? I w- I would say when he like first like gets the doll and gets on the train. That's that's kind of really the beginning of the movie. All okay. that other stuff is more like setty up stuff, and and uh, he just kind of like his the running and the when he's in the car. He's got, and like in the boat, the boat was awful. And he's, you know, there's like a stupid age joke. Like, hey, do you think you're experienced enough for this? He's like, you don't talk about my, or you don't talk about my youth. I won't talk about your age. You know, it was, it, uh, I, I don't know. It was weird. So I, I can imagine why, uh, or I can imagine him not putting everything into it if he really did not enjoy the experience. Sure. But also, like, I mean, if it's a problem where he has an issue with his dialogue and his quippiness, I mean, he's a veteran enough actor to be able to throw his weight around on um, on the set if he wants to and say, like, hey, look, I'm not I'm not reading this. Go rewrite it. <laughs> um, I thought I thought his quippiness was uh, like fairly good in this film. It was just a little too rapid fire for me. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. My note to the to the editor would have been like, "Hey, go back and every time Michael Caine makes a snarky quip, check and see if he's previously made another snarky quip in the last sixty seconds, and if he has, pick one of them and lose the other." <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But some of them are some of them are like subtle and good. I actually really like. I don't know why. I just it's. It's just two, or really just two words. Uh, you know, when they're going up to uh, Dumbledore's castle and he sees the guy at the front, he says, who's this? And Nikolai says, a friend. And he says, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was really good. <laughs> and how, how you can make just like those few tiny little words 
come out like that fucking funny to me. Um, I don't know. That that says something about his timing. Something else that could be a factor is that uh, uh, he received death threats while filming in Moscow and St. Petersburg uh, from Russian crime lords and had to have uh, two armed bodyguards with him at all times. And maybe that just wasn't very fun for him. Why? I don't know. I want to I I know, know what they were so upset about. That does it. Okay. All right. I guess maybe they they said, "Why are they filming this movie? What's this film? What's this movie about?" Oh, it makes us look bad. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Retinal scan complete. Validating security clearance. Clearance granted. You may now enter the briefing room. David, there's several. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't call this exactly a uh, what you call it, um, a MacGuffin movie. But it's it sort. I mean, it, it, it's not. But I wouldn't, because I don't think a bunch of people were trying to get it, other than Yuri. But it wasn't like that wasn't part of the movie, right? I, I, yeah. So I, I yeah I agree with you. I don't really think there's a MacGuffin going on. So in order to keep track of the overall plot, though, I think it's important to note, like, the, I mean, there are items that are in play that various people want, uh, various people have, like, access to or designs on, and that is uh, two samples of Alarex, uh, which are inert by themselves, but combined supposedly make a toxin deadly enough for a single drop to kill a million people. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, The formula for the Alarex is also in play. That is some data that is concealed in a microdot and a large shipment of heroin. Um, Would you like to take a stab at explaining Dumbledore's grand plan to me? I believe his overall objective was, because we talked about this, and I, I do think he did want to make the real trade. Uh, but fake it like it was going to be faked. Uh, But that's a simple explanation. He's going to trade a deadly chemical for a fuckload of heroin. That's his objective. His grand plan in this is hiring a shitload of people that are very compartmentalized as far as what their roles in completing that objective is. And some even uh, are at odds with each other in completing that objective and how this works is there is an old ex KGB colonel who is going to be delivering some bottles, which is half of the chemical Palmer has been hired to find that shipment and destroy it or bring it back. And Nikolai has been hired to protect Palmer And Greg, who's an ex-CIA agent, was hired to verify the the quality of the heroin. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is every... Oh, and Natasha, who is the colonel's daughter, who we also think might have been an item with Nikolai, who also seems to have been hired by Dumbledore. By the way, he's called Alex in the film, but because he's famous for being Dumbledore, we're going to play him, call him Dumbledore. Um, Anyway, so this is this is... Dumbledore's grand plan. Um, the problem is, is the no one in that chain knows each other is working for Dumbledore till way later in the film. So when Palmer goes snooping about at the shipment, the KGB colonel gets really pissed off that he's like snooping around and kicks him off the train. But Palmer had a whole other job to do. And um, I don't. Do you want me to? Do you want me to mention the twist now or? No, 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 no. This okay. is just this is just the overall plan. The overall this, plan. The surface. Think the you, surface plan. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Or the the framework on which everything hangs. Um, trade Alarix for ha- heroin. Uh, you're sending three different versions of the Alarix. The Alarix is being sent in three different forms by 
different people and, and other people are also involved in trying to get the heroin back. Um, I want to talk about the origin or how, not the origin of the Alarix, but at least how it comes into the story. Um, Dumbledore used to be in charge of like some bioweapons project in Russia. Uh, now he says he's just like the chairman of the board. He says that in a way that kind of suggests like they've isolated him from the hands on day to day things. But, you know, his his name is still attached to it or something. Right. Um, so he knows about the formula. He knows that it's uh, that a sample has gone missing or at least that's what he tells Palmer. He must also know he has to also know that the guy that's stealing the sample of the formula or that's, he tells Palmer the sample went missing. Okay. Uh, actually, we don't know how the sample got to, well, I guess Dumbledore stole it. I mean, he's, he, you know, he had to steal it so he could give, you know, portion. Uh, let's see. I'm going to call it part B to Gradsky. And to right. conceal part A in the Russian doll, which is going to plant on Palmer without his knowing. Um, right. But he also clearly knows that Kulbitsky, and that's the the scientist that we see at the very beginning of the film, um, or Kublitsky, I, I, I get it a little messed up. I, I might be mispronouncing it. Something like that. Um is headed to the North Korean embassy with the formula hidden in his passport. Do you believe that? Well, that's, that's the big twist that I was gonna, yeah, the, the scientist has the, the actual formula written down on a micro dot hidden in his passport. Okay. But that's, that's transferred over to Palmer's passport. Like that's like the cover passport he was given. Right. Sure. Um, right. So we believe we believe that Dumbledore knows that Kublitsky has the microdot in his passport, and that's how he gets his hands on that. So somehow he was able to get a hold of the samples independently of killing Kublitsky, but he needs to kill Kublitsky to get the formula. I think this is minus spy points. I mean, I might be digging too far down into the weeds for this one, <laughs> uh, where there is a lot of much higher priority or uh, low hanging fruit targets for minus spy points in this film. Um, but let's also mention like, why is Kublitsky going to the North Korean embassy during a protest, like during a violent protest? That I don't know. That's I, that, I don't that, either. I'm not even really sure what happened at the beginning other than remaking the beginning of hip Crest file. Right. Uh, but that's a very good question, Todd. <laughs> here's here's another one. Yuri. Now, Yuri, by the way, is a rival. Uh, you know, a Dumbledore is a. Uh, I mean, essentially, he's a, a proto oligarch. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know. I guess we we we'll, we'll call him Russian mafia for simplicity's sake. Yuri is a rival uh, Russian mafia head. Uh, who will at some point in the movie claim that Kublitsky was working for him. That doesn't make any sense to me that I could put together. Um, Yuri oh, I don't remember that. Oh, if he said that, that explains the ending. That means Yuri Does was it? working with Sue the whole time. That walk means me through. Walk, walk okay. me through. Pretend you're Yuri. Pretend That's... you're Yuri and explain your plan. Well, if, if Yuri was, because at the end of the, that's another big, because there's like 50 big twists at the end. Uh, this movie puts M. Night Shyamalan to shame. Um, uh, at the end, it turns out Yuri and Sue are like buddies. Um, and I was trying to figure out how long they were buddies. And I, I had come to the conclusion they had to have been old buddies considering. And this was a much deeper plan to begin with. But if Yuri claims... Kublitsky was working for him that means him and Sue were very old friends and so when Nikolai steals the formula and then uh, Dumbledore is like hey Sue I guess what I got the formula why don't okay, you give wait, me wait, some wait. heroin back, back, back up 
And without anyone interfering with you, if you're Yuri, tell me how your plan works. If if just things go according to your plan. Oh, you just get a fuckload of heroin. He probably had okay. the same deal. So it's so it's you you pay Kublitsky to steal the formula, and you tell him to take it to the North Korean embassy. Now this is what I'm talking about. That kind of makes sense why he would go to the embassy. Still right. doesn't make sense why he wouldn't like. You know, see around the corner, like, oh, they're fucking attacking police officers and flipping over <laughs> fucking cars. Maybe yeah. I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but then, so then the formula would have been delivered to, uh, you know, through the embassy to Sue, and then Yuri gets the heroin. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I that, like that. That makes me feel a lot better about this movie. Cause that, it that makes was... me feel a little bit better about yeah. this movie. <laughs> really? It makes me feel a lot better about it. I, I'm not saying it makes the movie an amazing movie. I'm just saying at the end, there's just so many twists and like, you know, uh, like surprises and whatnot. And, and one of them that really annoyed me is why the fuck w- would they even bring this? This was way too much of a twist to add into this cesspool of twists. So the fact that there's this big setup explains why Sue and Kublitsky are working together. And that's why Kublitsky was a dick to Palmer. Because by that time, Dumbledore probably would have already contacted Sue and let him know, hey, by the way, uh, I've stumbled on this piece of information you probably want. Why don't you hook it up with some heroin? And that explains why Sue was planning on double crossing Dumbledore in the first place. That, it, that this this makes a lot more sense. It's it's still okay. got way too many twists going on, but I I feel I, there's a, like a lot of the stuff that happened in the movie that I was just like, this is what, where did this come from? Now it makes sense. Okay, um, I am on a side mission to check IMDb right now. For some reason, Google is making me fucking uh, do a robot search, but. Uh, I wanted to check writers. No, there's okay. This is what I was going to say. Like this movie feels like the script feels like I would expect to go to IMDb and find out that there were like 19 people that worked on the script, (laughs) (laughs) but no, it's just Harry Allen towers. And they also credit Len Dayton who absolutely didn't have anything to do with this, even though they bill it as Len Dayton's bullet to Beijing. This is not based on one of his books. Um, I don't even know if he's still alive, Um, but uh, okay. Nope. So all, all this can be Harry Allen towers. You are the villain of this movie in my opinion (laughs) (laughs) you are the true villain (laughs) um how much how much meth would it take for me to write something this jumbled um i do have a i do have a best number three tradecraft i struggled to find good tradecraft in this film i got it number three i'm giving it to bulgarian umbrella trick uh, that nice. the old lady stabs Kublitsky with. Yeah, nice. It's it's not a huge winner, uh, no. <laughs> but I couldn't I couldn't find much. No, this is great. Dig- All of our plus this- spy points are going to be like the best trade craft. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm I'm sorting through crumbs here. Um, <laughs> so okay, so great. So we have a Yuri Kublitsky Sue story that kind of makes sense which is great and then in comes dumbledore dumbledore is like haha no i'm gonna get the heroin or at least i think because i don't know that yuri is working with sue so i send a sample with gradsky and i send and i don't tell gradsky what it is right i just tell he's just you know gonna deliver some stuff i send another sample I plant another, the sample of the part A, remember you need two parts to make the Alarex, on Harry Palmer, and I also plant the microdot in yeah, Harry that, Palmer's that. Yeah, but the, the, what he gave the colonel, with Grotowski, I think his name, um, he, he gave Gratsky. the, Gratsky, the, the Alarex that he gave Gratsky turned out to be fake, according to Nikolai. 
the 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 formula for the actual other ingredient was on the micro dot and then the russian doll was uh contained the other critical ingredient so pretty much the entire chemical was put into palmer's care unbeknownst to him yes which, yes which, which, which kind of bugs me um and and this is going to end up once we once we get once we hack through this entire Dumbledore plan, I have quite a bit to say about Alex's plan. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we will come back to that. For now, I'm just going to mention that, uh, uh, well, I guess I didn't have to mention this now. It's just where I have it in the notes, and I, I'll forget it otherwise. But at the end of the film, Harry destroys the microdot, which is totally meaningless unless we're somehow just supposed to believe that's the only copy of the formula. It's not. So... You know, destroying it is it doesn't you know really accomplish anything. Um, yeah. But uh, with the formula in hand, Dumbledore snuck it into Harry's passport and told Sue to get that passport from Harry when he arrives. We will be coming back to that. Overall, is this a good plan? No, I don't think so. It's 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 pretty it's pretty lousy. It totally depends on harry it one thing it depends on is harry taking the russian nesting doll from louis grandson into his luggage mm -hmm. which is not something you could plan on him doing no I, w I will say though i was really upset when he figures out it's in there and he says said take the bullet to beijing i thought he meant to train he meant this and i thought that was like a cute play on words with the russian doll no so I don't know what the bullet is. Are you tell tell me the chemical is the bullet. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be the chemical is the bullet. You're right. That that doesn't that doesn't land. Yeah, I I, I looked it up and they're, they're called my, my, hold on, Matroshka dolls, which means little matron. There's 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 a bunch of other ones like Russian dolls, Russian tea dolls, nesting dolls. There's there's no bullet anywhere. I guess it kind of has a bullet shape ish. I'm, I'm, yeah, I was angry. Right, that right, joke. right. The joke doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> so where we're at with this is, uh, and never minding, you, you know, the different decisions different characters make that fuck with it. Like, just as his plan stands, is Dumbledore's plan a good one? No. It's not. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate? I can elaborate. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I think it's way overcomplicated. Um, I have quite a bit to... I, I think his entire... I don't have my top three worst tradecraft. I'm going to kind of just say his plan is my worst tradecraft for this film. Uh, so I have a, quite a few points to point out, but um, so I don't know if you want to talk about your concerns. There's, I mean, there's a lot of like just critical breaking points where he's making assumptions of how people will act that he couldn't possibly have foreseen. Um, the idea of, of that Harry will even put the Russian nesting doll from Louis' grandson into his luggage is something he can't uh, predict or, or tell. But that's also interesting. I want to uh, flag before we get any farther and make sure we mention we at the end of the day, we don't know if these Alarex samples are actually real or if it even matters because we know that the formula is the main part of right. his plan. The formula Nikolai does say they were fake. Nikolai uh, says they were fake. I think I think Dumbledore's lying to Nikolai when him and the Colonel. Uh, Gratsky um, dumped out. Remember, he convinced Gratsky to dump it and then replaced it with vodka and ammonia. Sure. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I do think they did that, but I don't. I I don't see how that would factor into if I'm Dumbledore making my master plan. Like you know, I don't know what people are going to do. Um, so. I, wanna, that's what I, wanna... I think he factored that in and that's why he passed on the formula and Nikolai says they were all fake. And I think that's what Dumbledore said to Nikolai so that Nikolai wouldn't realize the real transaction was happening, which is what Palmer says at the end on the flight. Okay. Um, 
I think the plan also falls apart when, uh, okay. If it's, well, actually if it's fake, then the, it doesn't matter. Uh, the formula is everything. The formula part is weird though, because you're going to hide it in Harry Palmer's passport and expect Harry Palmer at some point to get to Beijing. Right. Um, why? I mean, you, you kind of gave Harry Palmer instructions to stop the stuff from getting to Beijing, but now you're planning for it to get there. Yeah. Um, th- this is what my main concern is as well is, uh, there's a lot of risks. Um, so here, here's, I don't, do you mind if I kind of jump in here? Please. Um, uh, the first step cross file film, the big twist is that Palmer's original superior knew Palmer for being like uh, an asshole, you know, or like, you know, obstinate. And he says that at the end, I was planning on you being kind of obstinate. Right. And I think that's what people liked about that film. And they tried to make that more of a thing in this film and just went overboard. And I think we're supposed to believe that Alex is like a master at social engineering and knows and has factored in everybody who he's hired, you know, and he, he knows their mannerisms and motivations so well that he was able to put them in place. For example, Palmer has already saved the world a couple of times, right? So for example, why even tell Palmer how serious this chemical is if he's expecting the colonel to keep the chemical safe on its journey, right? So, I mean, he was he was actually angry when Palmer was thrown off the train, but I think he expected Palmer to prevent this chemical from getting into the hands of North Korea, which he did emptying the bottles out, right? Sure. So, and and he already figured out that the other part is in the Russian doll. So, you're right. Why take the Russian doll there? Why Palmer would do that other than if Dumbledore was like, I know Palmer is going to think of how crazy and ridiculous this chemical is. He is going to do everything to stop this. But you're right. Why Why would Palmer take the Russian doll in after he figures out that chemical's in there? Uh, unless, unless Dumbledore is assuming he's not going to figure out it's in the Russian doll. Right. And why, why is Palm, why are, how are Palmer and Sue ever going to get to meet? Like if you're dumb, if you're Dumbledore and I'm asking you to explain your plan, can you explain to me why you think that Harry Palmer will ever end up in Sue's uh, grasp? The only thing I can think of is that other guy that his grandson gives the Russian doll, that guy left a note with the Russian doll that said, take the bullet to Beijing. And it was like a order from Alex or something. So he's been given the, the kid gives him the doll for good luck. Like this is for you. So I guess the idea is that, Oh, it's such an endearing cute gift that Palmer will no doubtedly take it. You're right. I don't, I don't know why we would think that character would do that, but we're to believe that Dumbledore thinks he will. Right. So I think Dumbledore thinks that he's a great genius. And, uh, you know, a deep under has a deep understanding of people's motivations and what, what they'll do in certain situations and given certain pressures. Um, but he's not, um, I, I actually made it a kind of a personal mission myself to keep Dumbledore's plan off of my top three worst list, uh, because (laughs) I was confident I could find stuff that was even worse. And I do think I pulled that off. (laughs) Um, I actually kind of like the idea and I think it would be a cooler story and, or I would like to see this at some point where like at the end of this movie, if we just found out that Dumbledore is just fucking senile, yeah, (laughs) like that he's, you know, that he used to be this master level chess player, Uh you know, of, of people, on the board and the grand game, what do we call it? The grand game, the big game. 
Um, but but he's just lost it. And now yeah. he's forgetting things. You know, he's like, you know, he he's like hiring Gradsky to send the sample to Sue and then forgetting that he did that and saying, oh, God, the sample's going to Sue. I need to hire someone now to stop that from happening. <laughs> and then I need to hire this guy to stop that from happening and yeah. just losing losing track of his shit. Yeah. Um, I think that would be a great plot twist in a in a better movie. Um, but uh yeah. Uh you got some good you got some heavy tradecraft notes you want to make here though. Yes. Uh first I, I wanna talk about the doll and the passport in my best tradecraft, because it's definitely in my worst tradecraft. But um uh my entire worst tradecraft just involves Alex's plan. So I'm, I want to talk about that together, but I, I did want to point out that I like the doll in the passport simply because of planting something on someone that, you know, they're going to keep. So the doll is a little risky because it's just a gift that you got from a little kid, which I guess lowers your guard a little bit. But I mean, if I'm in this world, I'm, I'm not going to trust anybody and anything that, and you know, it's like, well, they see, like he makes even the airport parallel where they say, don't take anything people have given you, you know, and uh, don't leave anything behind, you know, or something. Uh, but the passport he's going to need if he goes to Beijing, right? So if he has to have a passport, um, planting that micro dot under his picture would be a good place to start because um, he's going to need it to get into Beijing and need it to get out of Beijing, right? That's why I made my number three best trade craft, but I want to talk about uh, Alex's plan and why it bothers me. So uh, overall, the entire plan is super risky and his objective is pretty simple. Trade chemicals to get some heroin. <laughs> right. It shouldn't, it should not be this complicated. <laughs> no. Now I understand if you want to create a shell or a decoy or like a faint to kind of protect yourself, but sure. you don't need like six of them and the six of them being at odds with each other, right? Um, uh, I, you know, I've, I've, I've done some reading on denial and deception, and, and I think, like, the general academic consensus on denial and deception is oftentimes it's far too costly and far too risky to, to even, like, consider. And, you know, it, it should only be reserved for circumstances that are, like, where it's, like, really calls for it. Uh-huh. And, and so this, I think, is a great example of that, that you have this overly complicated, convoluted plan of, first of all, the passport and the doll. And why the passport, the doll specifically is really important, because you could, you could assume Palmer has his passport on him at all times, right? But the doll is, he, he, you don't even know that he's going to take it. And that brings me to my worst trade craft. Well, that was my worst trade draft number three is the risk of the doll and the passport. But my worst trade craft number two was having all these people unaware that they're working for Dumbledore. And the most important example of this in the film is Gratsky. When he finds Palmer snooping around in the train, like cargo, he's pulling guns on him with like his heavy, like bodyguards and then kicks him off the train. Well, now Palmer's not with his little Russian doll. Right. And, yeah. and because you set up, you set up this cesspool of fucking like, like, like competing, uh, uh, players in your like like little game they're, they're working against each other and you know Gratsky's gonna do his job don't fucking snoop around my shit get the fuck off I'm doing something really important like I can't have you snooping around right which is what he did right and then you got Greg who's really worried about like getting the drugs and shit and he's kind of watching the only thing that makes sense is Nikolai watching uh Palmer to make sure he stays alive right which that part Nikolai does that part does make sense Right. Which, if which, you if you accept if you accept the idea that Dumbledore knows that Palmer will eventually get to Sue, which I don't, which which right. again I don't buy. But if you buy that for some reason, you, like if you can fix that part of the track, then yeah. then yes, I agree. Like Nikolai as like, um, you know this this guardian character to make sure that you know things go right you know, to fix, to, to keep Palmer on track, you know? Exactly. Um, and, yeah. and and the reason why he wants him to get to Sue is they're going to make him the fall guy, but you have to believe Palmer's going to go and why Palmer 
gets off the train when he finishes the job, right? Didn't he get rid of the Alarax? He now found the other ingredient. Why are you taking it to Sue? Why not destroy it? They're, like, what are you, just curious? There's, right, there's no right. reason we'll for get, him we'll get, to... We'll get to that. Focus on Dumbledore, okay. though. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, anyway, this brings me to, like, so... My three, two, and one worst tradecraft is just Alex's plan. And what really boils down to is everyone has to play their part exactly. And he has to have planned out, which we already know from the film, he did not plan the Colonel kicking Palmer off the train because he gets on the phone. He's like, where the hell is Bratsk? He's like, damn it. He's angry. And he calls up homie. He's like, why the fuck? What did you say to Palmer? Why did Palmer get kicked off? Why did the Colonel kick him out? You know, and it was, and the reason why this happened is because the Colonel didn't know that, that Palmer was working for, for uh, Dumbledore. So this whole thing, just all of my worst tradecraft ranking is going to Alex's plane. It's just, it, it's just bad. I don't, I don't like, yeah. I literally had this experience at a company that I will not name uh, <laughs> where uh, I had an extremely bad boss. Uh, I do think he suffered from mental issues who would basically tell me to do stuff and then yell at me the next day for doing the stuff he told me to do. Um, <laughs> that's, that's why I think Dumbledore is fucking nuts. Yeah. I do. I do have a best number three. Oh shit. Did I not sort these right? I think my three for a moment I put it anyways. One of my best is the umbrella trick. This is probably supposed to be my number two um, best. Hiring Palmer yeah, that's as, yeah. as the fall guy is in itself not a bad idea at all because yeah. he was the last one on the Kublitsky murder case just before he was fired. So if you are looking for a fall guy, someone that potentially like had last contact with Kublitsky mm -hmm. and then shows up in North Korea with the formula, um, that's I mean, that kind of clocks mm -hmm. as opposed to like billion dollar brain where we were never able to even figure out why Palmer was chosen by anyone <laughs> <laughs> to be involved. At least this part makes a little bit of sense. However, caveat fall guy for who, like who is supposed to, who, if I'm Dumbledore, who am I worried about? Let's see. Like, who am I trying to fool? Oh, that's a good point. Right? Let's get into some more characters here. <laughs> Enough about Dumbledore. We're going to, I mean, all of this stuff is going to keep touching back on, on Dumbledore. Um, let's, lead, let's lead off. Let's just get them out of the way. Chechens. <laughs> Nonsense. Period. <laughs> Minus spy Chechens just show up out of nowhere, like before the story has even started. They're they're fucking gunning for Harry Palmer. We got boats. You mentioned planes, trains, and automobiles. Well, guess what, bitch? We got boats too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's they they just are just absolute random fucking barbarians showing up out of nowhere, shooting their guns off for no reason. Like Harry Palmer isn't even like read in on the case yet. <laughs> like right. killing him. What would killing him do? <sighs> I made this my worst number three and I'll even put that as higher. This is, this is one of the reasons. And I think I can justify this. I think I can stick this landing. I can find three worse trade crafts even than Dumbledore's fucked up senile <laughs> master plan. And that's yeah. that's that's uh, exhibit number one, the Chechens. Yeah. <laughs> Bullshit. Get him out of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh Gradsky and Natasha. Uh did I had to I watched it a whole bunch of times. Um at the North Korean embassy at the beginning of the film, it really does look like that's Gradsky in the window, which doesn't make any sense. I just wanted to flag that. I, I watched it. So I rewound. I watched it so many times. I can't confirm that that's him. Yeah. But if it is, that's really, really fucking weird. That is. Um, yeah. I just, I just wanted to state that, but whoever it is, it's definitely not a Korean. 
Yeah. I mean, it's definitely <laughs> like a, a Russian Russian looking fucking thug with an AK or something. Yeah. Um. So as we've stated, uh, okay, so Gradsky is hired to transport one of the samples of the Alarex. Really, and it seems like the only reason he's hired uh, is just to give Palmer some something to chase. Um, like uh, uh, like a fall guy for your fall guy, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, his commitment, as you mentioned, to delivery appears legit. He doesn't know what he's delivering. He doesn't need to know. He just wants money. He's ex KGB. This is uh, this is the era of um. Oh shit, I forget now. It's still it's still pre Gorbachev. It's a uh, is it Brezhnev or something? I don't know. Wasn't it Yeltsin? Yeltsin, yeah. We're in the era of Yeltsin right now. Yeah. Um it's the total coincidence of Natasha, who is uh also in Dumbledore's employ, uh turning up and turning out to be his daughter. Uh, also working the other end of things that that lets Gradsky know that Palmer was also hired about hired by Dumbledore. It does seem Dumbledore didn't know about Natasha being Gradsky's daughter. Once again, an example of uh, you know, if you make shit too complicated, it's gonna get it out of control. <laughs> um. I guess we already talked about, like, yes, uh, the key point, another key point where Dumbledore's plan is so shaky. Uh, how could he, like, why would he not think that Gradsky would just kill Palmer? Like, if he didn't have the information to right. not kill Palmer. Right. Uh, he's extremely upset when he finds out Gradsky threw Palmer off the train. Um why did you even put them on the same train? And why did you have them at odds? Gradsky's job is to get the chemicals to Beijing. And then Palmer's job is to prevent that from happening. So there's going to be a fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've, you've put a conflict in place without any knowledge of how that conflict will be resolved. Yeah. Uh, by the players. Um, Gradsky is when he, when he's informed of what he is transporting, uh, in a, I don't know, kind of, I guess kind of uncharacteristic way, but now he's a mercenary. So I guess whatever. Um, but when Harry tells him like, Hey, this Alarix shit, it's like really, really bad. And we shouldn't let the North Koreans have it. Uh, Gradsky's like, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll piss in some bottles for you to, uh, yeah. to fake the samples. Um, but then like when they get to Beijing and, uh, Sue is basically got, Oh, is that the ammonia? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> so he goes and pisses in the bottle of vodka. So they're drinking half bottles of vodka, then pouring half of them in, and then pissing into the bottles. Right, and but, Palmer says, "Palmer says, keep drink, keep keep drinking. I can't fill all these bottles on my own." That I totally missed that joke. I I get it now. Okay. Right, um, but like like uh, I was about to say, like he's also as easily uh, ready to just walk away from Palmer to leave him with Sue. Um, yeah. he reappears as part of the contingent that's delivering the heroin. And at that point, again, it's not clear what part he's playing in the game. Um, as far as we know, he was just hired to do one thing, deliver some bottles. Right. Now he's delivered some fake bottles. Presumably he gets paid. I don't know why he's still involved in the delivery of the heroin back to St. Petersburg. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm going to say, I don't know a lot in this. I've already said, I don't know a lot in this podcast. I'm going to say, I don't know a lot more in this podcast. This is just something I don't fucking know. <laughs> um, 
It is kind of weird why, because he's made the delivery, right? So why does he need to be there anymore? Oh, well, I guess they have to see the item. That's right. The, I, Sue has to be like, okay, yes, there are chemicals here. There's writing A25 whatever. Uh, it smells like vodka and ammonia. Okay, you can go now. Right? And then, and then Greg has to verify the drugs. Okay, you can go now. Uh, again, why is Palmer there? <laughs> again, why is Gretzky there? I mean, you know, after his, his part of the job is done. We don't know. Oh, uh, but he, he had to make the delivery to Sue. Then, then Sue says you can go now. Right. So why is he there, though, when the heroin is being delivered? Oh, you mean at the truck? Right. At the end. At the end. You know, remember, this whole plan is like, get the Alarex to North Korea, and then North Korea, get the heroin to St. Petersburg. Kind of simple. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's in the extended cut. <laughs> oh, I am not watching the extended cut. You could, you, you, you couldn't pay me. Um, yeah. Natasha, his daughter, uh, you know, just uh, seems weird and random that uh, she's his daughter, but that kind of places a function like it connects. I don't know. She's she's able to validate for him that for Gradsky, her dad, that Palmer is also working for Dumbledore and now so they're wondering why Dumbledore is being an insane idiot um she's uh she's got a scene an interesting scene I thought where she tries and fails to seduce Harry Palmer um I like this a little bit or uh, mm, uh, it's it's worth noting. Uh, I I like the scene where she tries to seduce Palmer because she's it's so obvious and she's so bad at it. And there's like no world in which uh, I'm Michael Caine at whatever age he is at this point where Mia fucking Sarah just shows up out of nowhere and is like, <laughs> I was just wondering what I could do for you, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's just not going to fly. I'm giving it my best tradecraft of the movie, not to the characters, but to the movie itself. I enjoyed watching uh, uh, an inexperienced, naive agent trying to pull off a honey trap and failing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give it minus five points for them for even thinking it would work. Uh, it would work on me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll give a little plus five points for Harry Palmer for avoiding a very, very obvious honey trap. And I don't even know what they were trying to accomplish with that. Right. In the first place. Uh, except for maybe the idea of, Nikolai wanting to like spy check his dad to see just how much of a fucking horn dog he is because Nikolai suspects, right? Mm -hmm. I think, or at least what, at what point does Nikolai actually start suspecting that Harry Palmer is his dad? I'm not sure. Uh, I think he, when he first asked him about the honey pot, were you ever involved in a honeypot trap? And he says no. Oh, that was I on the plane. That's at the end on the plane. Yeah, that's on the plane. So I think maybe at some point it just clicks for him. I guess. Maybe he has other. Anyways, maybe he has other reasons, like, you know, other information. But uh, it's just worth noting that, like, maybe he's just trying to check, like, you know, is is this guy a guy that'll just stick his dick in anything, no matter how <laughs> fucking obvious of a fucking trap it is? Yeah. If, if yes, he might be my dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and let's remember who, who, uh, uh, Jason Connery's dad, 
Uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, actually is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I liked Mia Sara. I liked seeing her in this movie. It looks like she doesn't make as much of an appearance in the in the next film. So whatever, she gets her happy life. Uh, I I actually kind of thought though up until a certain point, like she she represented as pretty competent and a little intriguing, a little mysterious. Oh. Um. I thought, like, we've talked uh, some about, like, beautiful women and blending in as spies. I think yeah. she does a pretty good job in St. Petersburg. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, she, she, the way she's dressed and kind of carries it, she does kind of blend in. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then once, but once she interacts with her father, uh, then she just, like, kind of disappears from the movie and becomes a complete an interesting shadow yeah. of a, of a non-character, yeah. you know, with, with nothing to do. Right. <laughs> uh, Yuri. Yuri is okay. So I'm glad we went over and, and kind of sketched out a possible, uh, okay. They, that, that he was working with Sue from the beginning and also remember, he claims Kublitsky was working for him. But yeah, okay, so we covered that. So maybe he just wanted to trade that to Sue for the heroin. Uh -huh. Also, Louis is fucking working for him as well. Like, while Louis is pretending to work for Dumbledore, Louis actually informing to Yuri. So um, why does Yuri seem to know so little about what's going on? Like... Louis, well, Louis, Louis, Louis doesn't know. Like everybody that works for Dumbledore, they, they all say, "The less you know, the better." He doesn't tell you much. Blah blah blah. So this way, if Louis kind of double crosses him, right? Uh, there's not so much information he can give. Right? Okay. Okay. And 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 I guess this is why why that whole nightclub scene where Yuri is just like, "A friend of Alex is not a friend of mine." Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and he's, you know, swinging his dick around in front of Palmer. You know what I mean? Like, it just felt so out of place. But th the fact that he was working with Sue from the get-go makes it a little bit make more sense. Because they were trying to recover the micro dot. That's like the, the, the random assassin attempt after the nightclub scene was obviously from Yuri, right? And, it, and it's probably because they want the micro dot, right? That's that's my guess. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm thinking. Okay, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. And, and I, I remember don't think they the know about the like, micro dot, though. I don't think they know about that. That's what I'm saying. If he was working with Sue, they would know the scientists had the. the oh, because on Dumbledore told Sue to expect the micro dot. If Sue's working with Yuri, then he tells him there's a micro dot involved. Yeah. And somebody's bringing it, and they just kind of induce its bomber somehow, wow. which explains the fake Alarax bottles with Grotsky, uh, because uh, that's kind of like the decoy, I guess, right? I guess. <laughs> they, 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 that's what. I'm, yeah, I, 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 like I'm. I'm glad that we piece together why Yuri and Sue are working, like why they're buddying up at the end of the movie. And it explains a lot more about the whole story of the movie up until now. But I'll tell you this much. It's, it's, it's a little over the top and um, I, I didn't care for it. I didn't, I don't, I don't understand why Yuri has such a massive hard on for killing Palmer uh, at, at the end of the film. Um, I absolutely, uh, well, okay, so if Sue, uh, ch -ch -ch. like, w at the end of the day, what does Sue get out of this? Sue's already been played. Uh, well, it, the idea, I, I think the original deal was if, 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 we're at, if we're accurate in figuring out that Yuri and Sue have been working together, I think the original deal was Yuri was going to get the dot to Sue, and Sue would give him the heroin. Well... Now that Dumbledore has fucked Sue, Sue wants to fuck Dumbledore back. And the idea is they're going to steal the heroin back and they're going to have the original. Yuri's going to get his heroin and Sue's going to get the formula. 
That that I think is the actual plan. Okay, because I was also wondering why Sue is like uh, you know still delivering the heroin. And by the way, you know he says it, it would take him twenty four hours to validate the samples. Um, he doesn't wait that long. Also, he could have just looked in the passport and seen that the microdot is not there. Right, because uh, Palmer says he carries two passports. So right. I'm presuming okay. that's the one he gave to Sue. And he's been holding, keeping it a secret that he figured out the dot was in his passport the whole time. Okay. But somehow he can't figure out the Russian doll has a very important piece. I don't like it. Anyway, might but, have an important piece. <laughs> might have a, an important piece in it. Uh, but he could check his passport picture hiding him. But anyway, uh, what I did like about all of this is after the big, you know, everything's figured out, Palmer gets away from uh, Sue and his life is saved by Nikolai. They go and uh, uh, they go to try and stop the, the heroin thing. We meet Yuri and Yuri's handing cash to Palmer because Palmer contacts Yuri and says, hey, by the way, Alex is a piece of shit and mm -hmm. I want to help you. We're, I'm not friends with him anymore. Hey, how would you like a fuckload of heroin? I'm going to tell you <laughs> where it is. All you got to do is show up and take it. And I don't know, throw me a bone or something. And we'll be on a merry way, which I thought was a fantastic idea. So I made my best tradecraft number one. Uh, the the idea that he was going to uh, until we find out that Sue was working with Palmer with uh, with Yuri the whole time. I don't see it anywhere in a million years that this would work out like this. So I like Palmer reaching out to the mafia and saying, "Hey, would you like a lot of drugs for free?" How about you give me like a thousand dollars and I'll tell you where it is and you can get these drugs for free. And, and that's how he was able to stop the plot and fuck over, you know, Dumbledore and, and all this other stuff. But the even bigger twist to twist all twists was that Yuri and, and uh, Sue were working together. So that, that just makes everything bad. Right. I tried to, I tried to give this plus spy points uh, for myself, but I think I think it broke down a little where uh, you're just I mean you're just basically making sure the heroin ends up in the hands of the most powerful and most violent of the of of the mafia gangs. I think at the end, like you have to assume that they also called the cops. Um, but we're gonna get to that I think with Craig. Oh, that's right. Uh, real soon. Oh, so like, he was gonna screw over Yuri. Like, you can't just give Yuri the information. Like, if your goal, I'm Harry Palmer, my job right now, I've taken care of the Alarex. That's great. Uh, except I actually haven't. Or, wait, no, I have. I have. I have. I've taken care of the Alarex situation. Uh, now I just want to stop the heroin situation. Um, the, you know, simply tipping Yuri off to the to the drop-off point to create like the ambush uh that doesn't do it by itself like one of them's gonna get the heroin so i also need to call the cops oh okay okay well i'm gonna add that to my best tradecraft okay that he's got to call the cops yeah craig is a fucking idiot <laughs> he's gonna get He's going to get my number one. He almost got my number two and my number one because I was thinking again with this. Uh, okay. We find out in, in the end. Okay. He's actually DEA. Uh, he also wants to stop the heroin from getting there. Um, I'm not even. Okay. Oh, oh. And this is another part oh, uh, of, you know, filing cases against fucking Dumbledore is like. Yeah. Why? Okay. Where did I write? There's no way Dumbledore needs to hire this fucking dude for this job of, of getting the heroin back. Like on the surface, he's an ex CIA guy just hanging around looking for a job, uh, you know, announcing himself to, to Palmer is, is dumb and without purpose. 
Um, oh, I so- think he was fishing. I think that's why he was chummy. You know, you always got to be chummy when you're fishing, right? I think he was like, why the fuck is Palmer here? Right? Like, if think about it. If I'm freelance, ex-CIA, veteran, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be like, why the fuck is Palmer on this train? That's the first question. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, I'm not going to say that to him. I'll be like, Palmer, hey, good to see you. Long time. You know, let's go get some drinks. Okay. Okay. I'll swallow that. What I want to say, what I want to say before I get to my number one worst trade craft, which I fucking love, by the way. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Although maybe you'll poke holes in it because you've, you've, you've brought up some good points on some of my, some of my complaints about this movie. But generally, uh, I'm Dumbledore. I am a fucking Russian crime lord oligarch. Uh, I don't need to hire broke dick fucking ex-CIA assholes <laughs> to check to see if my heroin is real. <laughs> I have people that can do that. Yeah, I'm sure you know what you I'm saying. You know what I'm people. saying? Yes, absolutely. I know exactly what you're it's saying. It's another. It's another. Like, hey, like. Dumbledore likes to play like he likes to play wild uh, poker as if he's only going to get dealt wild cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> there's no way there's, you don't need to hire this guy. There's no there's no particular skills. I can find someone in Russia that can tell if heroin is real. I don't yeah, need right. to hire an ex CIA guy. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Here's From, my word. Oh, yeah. I, go, I, go, I, go, go. I like I like that point, and and I definitely think you got a good point. Uh, but uh, Palmer did say, "Oh, it's just like back in Nicaragua where you were looking for drugs. Like he was there just to get drugs, right?" I know it's one line, and the line does seem kind of forced, but. I think that's the movie's explanation for your question, but I'm on your side. There is no reason that that that, that Greg needs to be hired for this at all. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. And also, like, he he doesn't do anything. So I assume, too, he also called in the cops for the sting at the end. Oh. Um, because he's going to say, like, on his final level of truth, if we're to believe the movie... He's actually working for the DIA, DEA, and he has, quote unquote, spent two years trying to get these bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Which bastards, Alex or Yuri? It's not exactly clear. Uh, it looks like he was hired by Dumbledore to bring the heroin back. Um, I guess. Now, I mean, I kind of also was, was wanted to quibble a little bit about the idea that the cops would even show up. Like, my uneducated understanding is that cops in general don't like to get involved in mafia shootouts. When when mafia guys want to fucking <laughs> shoot at each other and kill each other, the cops are like, all right, let them do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> we'll clean it up later. Yeah. Um, but... Maybe if he spent two years doing this, uh-huh. like maybe I could give him credit for having figured out which cops to tip off that would actually show up. Right. Um, I had to check really quick too, like because DEA, I I most often think of uh, as a, uh, a domestic intelligence agency of the United States, but actually they do a lot of stuff abroad. Uh, yeah, surprised. well, because they got to stop it from coming in. Right. And I do know heroin comes. What it, I think it usually comes from like Afghanistan area. Or the, the, I, man, I forgot. There was a documentary I watched on this. Yeah, place. for sure. No, I mean, Afghanistan is a massive fucking source of. of Just poppies in general. Yeah, yeah. right. I, I think that's where our, all our Adderall and. Or not Adderall, Arla, uh, Vicodins, and fucking narcos come from and shit. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, right. I didn't see any reference of them ever having operated in in Russia, but uh, but yeah, I was just I felt a little more educated to know that the DAA does uh, do international operations. Yeah, 
Uh, okay. Here's my worst. And I think this is, this is, this, this could go for the crown. I, I don't know. This, this could be one of the worst of this podcast. Um, they're going to meet or, or, uh, they're, they're in Beijing. Sue wants to see Palmer because Sue wants the passport. Right. Sue is okay with seeing Gradsky because Gradsky brought him, you know, it was explained to him that he's bringing part of the sample or something. How the fuck is pointing a gun at Mia Sarah going to get you into this meeting? Like, <laughs> let's start with, let's start with, aren't you like, for one thing, aren't you supposed to be there? Right. Like, isn't Sue expecting you? Once right. he gets in, Sue is like, yeah, check it out. Try all the heroin you want. Like, you know, <laughs> do all this stuff. Take all the heroin. So, so it's not like Sue was like averse to the idea of Craig getting into this meeting, but also like, what's this guard's thought process? Like, dude, I'm hired to stop. Like my job is to stop people with guns from getting to my boss. You pointing a gun at, okay, who is she again? Like, I don't even know. Like, I mean, I know she's Mia Sarah. She's Gradsky's daughter, but the guard has got to be like, what are you, what are you even doing? Like, no, <laughs> yeah. it's not how we do things in North Korea. You can't just I point to the guns, <laughs> right? You can't yeah. just point a gun at a random woman that I've never seen before yeah. today and yeah. say, take me to see your boss. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was, yeah, that was a weird one. Uh, Nikolai. I, wait, hold yeah. on. I, wait, oh I, yeah. Go for it. I, I have uh, my best Traycraft number two. I like. I don't know why Greg is in the movie, but I like him playing the drug dealer so well. I mean, it didn't fit him so much that when he jumped out to take the shot for Palmer at the end, and he's got a bulletproof vest, I was like, why the fuck is this guy saving Palmer's life? And he's like, I'm DA. And I was like, fuck, another twist. This is fucking stupid. But, you know... He really played the drug dealer part. Like the big twist was so ridiculously like confusing and surprising because I was like, Oh, this guy's like a sleazy, like international drug dealer, like expat type of "Ah, uncle Sam never took care of me. You know, I didn't get my boat and my pickup. I'm just going to deal drugs across the country, the world. Where's my my helicopter? Where is my helicopter? (laughs) You know, uh, so I'm just going to deal drugs internationally, right? Uh, I, I, and, and it turns out he's DEA. I, I like the cover, so that made my best tradecraft number two. Okay, but I hate the reveal because it comes I, out of fucking nowhere. That, it's that, total duck, duck, goose. Yeah, because they're about to shoot Palmer, and he jumps out in front of Palmer. I'm like, why are you saving Palmer? Right. Why do you give a shit? Like, yeah. oh, my God, stop there. Oh, wow. Well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <Okay>. Nikolai. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Nikolai. I like him. I like him. I think I think he's finally the character that uh actually gives Harry Palmer some dimension, which I think he's been badly lacking. You know, there's a lot of spy movies that I, I look at and uh say, Where's your family? Like, are you just, you know, completely disconnected from the real world? you know, our spy hero or something. Um, But this guy, this guy was decent. And I like, I mean, I I don't like, I don't like the fact that Palmer lies to him about being his father. Um, It does look like. I don't think Palmer knows. You don't? I I think he might've thought it's possible, especially after the honey trap question. Um, But I, I, you know, I think he's avoiding it. You're right. It's really mean that he he doesn't want to like pursue the truth, but I I don't think he knows that it's his son. I think he's just come to the realization: holy shit, he might be my son. Right. And I mean, uh, you know, Palmer does seem to be interested in 
trying to guide the Jason Connery character, the Nikolai character toward yeah. the, the, the path of righteousness. Right. Uh, which again, like I said, like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's a little more dimension for Palmer. Right. Um, I think I would like to hear what you have to say, but I will go ahead and say that, uh, you know, I, I read some reviews where people really did not treat Jason Connery's performance in this movie kindly. And I think that they were underrating him. I thought he was really actually good at being like guarded, but Mm -hmm. kind of having an underlying innocence behind him. Um, I agree. And this kind of, yeah, this kind of like, am I doing, am I doing good daddy? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, but, but, but concealed, like you know under a layer of like you know uh, uh you know a uh, false competence or something false confidence or something because... I, I thought it works i thought it works i think i think connery looked at the script and you know was seeing like oh i see i get it like i'm someone that is in need of a father figure and i have found that in dumbledore yeah and now i'm learning that uh, you know, my, my need to prove myself, you know, as a good son or something in this kind in that kind of like, uh, replacement relationship of a missing father, uh, you know, can, can be more complex or something. I don't know. I liked him. I liked, I liked the, my favorite part of the film, the part where I was like, oh yeah, this is really fucking cool. And by the way, even though we're shitting all over this film, I kind of liked it. I mean, this, the trade craft is garbage, uh, but I had fun watching it. And I yeah. thought a really good high point for me, like emotionally story wise was the part where they get to the Beijing and basically everyone has turned against Nikolai. Yeah. You know, they're all going to walk away from him. I, I don't know. There's some, there's something kind of cool there. Oh, absolutely. You know, he gets abandoned by the group. He He's the dedicated part to helping, you know, Dumbledore's plan come to fruition. And then Greg kind of just like shoves him off like a, like an annoying little pup, you know, like you did your job to get the fuck out of here. We don't need you anymore. Like his job was to keep Palmer safe. Then he did it. He's like, you're done. You don't need to be with us anymore. And then he really makes needs to make that ultimate choice, you know, Dumbledore or, or Palmer. And, um, and I think that's a good uh, segue into Palmer. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning of the film, uh, it really seems like this guy's career is stalled out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you said, like he's, he's basically back to doing the, and this is again like what what is it 30 years yeah 30 years have passed between the films so let's assume 30 years have passed between the character he's still doing the same fucking stupid uh surveillance job yeah. kind of thing <laughs> after all the shit he's been through and done yeah kind of an underachiever i guess one of those bright underachievers mhm um I mean, I guess we're supposed to imagine, I mean, because we saw Billion Dollar Brain, which was the most recent film or in time wise. And at the end of that, he wasn't working for MI6, but it does look at this point like he did re-accept employment there. And, um, you know, maybe they saw Billion Dollar Brain and that's why they don't give him any good jobs anymore. (laughs) I also thought like maybe Dumbledore saw Billion Dollar Brain and saw, because I mean, just to revisit real quick, Billion Dollar Brain, he's just a pure patsy. He just yeah. follows the breadcrumbs anywhere they lead without doing any thinking on his own. Um, so it it would make sense if 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 they had seen Billion Dollar Brain or if they knew about this case, like. I could see how British intelligence would be like, yeah, we can't trust this guy with anything important. (laughs) (laughs) And how Dumbledore would look at this guy and say, oh, yeah, this is a guy that will follow the breadcrumbs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's why I briefly considered it giving it my best tradecraft was firing Palmer. (laughs) (laughs) 
And let's look at what he does with this shitty job too. Um, he's watching. Okay, like you got to imagine. Okay, surveillance of this type. It's got to be like just days, days of boredom, of nothing happening, of nothing happening. And now there's a fucking riot going on. There's a there's a possibly a Russian Gradsky guy pointing an AFK out the window. They're flipping <laughs> over fucking car vehicles. Hey, oh yeah, that's right. I need to call my girlfriend. <laughs> 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 it's bad right like yeah. he's he's not he's not i would fire him oh absolutely yeah but here's the thing this is why i can't give it minus spy points for firing palmer or at least in the way that they they are wait this is why i can't give them plus spy points for firing harry palmer at least in the way they do you don't fire and fuck over an intelligence operative. Now I'm speaking as an uneducated person here, but I'm morally certain about this. You do not do this to intelligence people that have been serving in your agency for 30 years, no matter how shitty they are. You <laughs> give you give them a nice enough pension that they don't have to take any fucking weird side jobs or any money from the enemy to start talking about shit that they know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you make a habit out of that and it's, it's going to bite you. Uh, you, I, I can't imagine like the, just the very notion of firing someone from intelligence and saying like, fuck you. And by the way, fuck your pension. Yeah. (laughs) It just, it just seems like the most God awful fucking, uh, thing imaginable. Yeah. Overall, though, I did. He is better in this movie, despite the expectations people might have of him. He is better in this movie than in Billion Dollar Brain. And I think he's even better and more impactful and intelligent than I saw him in It Press File. Your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it seems like he's kind of learned his way. Um, yeah, I agree. He's really good at talking to people and he's putting the pieces together and he's, you know, asking the right questions. But yeah, I think, I think he's definitely gained quite a bit of experience. I mean, he holds his cards close to his chest. He shuts the fuck up about what he knows or suspects until like it's time. I think he's good at consistently making friends or allies along the way. Uh, you know, maybe he shouldn't, should have figured out like, you know, Louis wasn't the best guy to trust. Um, but the main thing, and this is more of a story thing than a plot thing is there's a moment on the plane with Nikolai where, uh, Nikolai is saying like the Alarex was fake, uh, where he makes the point, well, the heroin is fucking real. And I think there's maybe a subtle message here that's undersold by the movie that, you know, bullshit fantasy James Bond storylines about like, uh, catastrophic holocaustic fucking super bio weapons are like all fine and good. But at the end of the day, like there's actually some real shit going on and some real harm that is being done with the heroin trade and stuff. And I, I desperately wished it had turned out that the whole Alarex thing was entirely fake and that it's really like the heroin that is needs to be focused on. I, I just think that like would have, I mean, in my poetic, storyline loving heart uh would have enjoyed that kind of like twist in the movie where like um you know all this fantasy spy bullshit is like one thing but like hey there's real shit happening to real people and we need to do something about it yeah okay passport (laughs) 
<laughs> so you always carry two, huh? That's yeah. going to be hard to manage. You know, you need to get the right stamps on whatever, but you know, maybe right. plus five points. Um, if you, uh, okay. This is my worst number two trade craft. I need to work, work it through a little, uh, So, okay, so I have two fake passports, right? So anytime someone asks, or let's say one is real and one is fake, just for the sake of argument. Anytime someone asks me for my passport, I always give them the fake one. So he gave the fake one to the lady at the hotel. Right. Uh, But anytime, if my rule is anytime anyone asks for my passport, I always give them the fake one, then... I would give the fake one to Sue when he asks mm-hmm. for it. Like, okay, that makes sense to you so far, right? You're with me? Like, I always give the fake one. Right. But in this case, I gave a different one to the hotel person than I did to Sue. What am I just like flipping a coin every time I pass out a passport? <laughs> no, I have right. to have a system. And if I knew, okay, so the only reason I would give Sue a different passport than I gave to the hotel lady is this. And that is that I knew that the passport I gave to the hotel lady had been fucked with and tampered with. Uh And if I knew that, I knew that way early in the movie. Right. And there's no reason for me to be carrying this fucking uh, uh, one that has the Alarex formula on it right. up until the end when I can make a grand statement to Nikolai about this is how much I give a shit about this thing being worth millions of dollars. He should have destroyed it immediately or there's no fucking sense in how he, you know, he just fucking, he just has a bunch of passports and he just pulls one out at random you know, wow. with, with no thought to it. That's my number two worst trade craft. Yeah. That, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but that leads us up to the, the final sting, the, 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 you know, quote unquote climax of the movie, your thoughts. I think we talked enough about this. Right. Unless there's something um, we, feel we didn't touch on. Uh, Palmer and Nikolai alerting Yuri to the delivery of the heroin. Uh, right, right, right. A little bit of plus five points. Why not make a quick buck off of Yuri while you're doing it as well? Yep. And um, yeah, and that's how the how the movie ends. And I'm going to tell you too, like uh, when you see all of them standing there together, you know, like at the end of the carnage. Uh-huh. You're basically looking at, and you know how like the movie ends with uh, Palmer saying to Nikolai, or at least we have voiceover that like, oh, I think I'm going to stay here in St. Petersburg and set up an agency. Yeah. This is his team. Oh, for the next film? Yeah. They like. <laughs> well, now we like, got to do it. <laughs> they like created the Avengers. Now it's gonna be now it's gonna, now it's gonna be Palmer and Gradsky and Nikolai uh, and Craig and maybe a little bit of Natasha uh, in the next movie and they're like a super team of ex spies. I don't know, man. I wonder uh, if this is what influenced Red because Red was a comic, wasn't it? A ver- yes, yes. Right. So when did that comic come out? Because that that sounds just like. Red. It totally does. Totally does. Yeah, September 2003. Yeah. yeah. Eight years later. Yeah. It's very likely. This this sounds just like wow. Uh well well now we gotta now we gotta do midnight at St. Petersburg. Let's have that conversation offline. Okay. <laughs> okay. I might want to move on from the okay. universe at this point. But I want to see the team together. <laughs> hey, I'm not telling you you can't watch the movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I'm not telling you you can't get on this podcast and talk about it. I'm just saying I might not be there. Yeah. <laughs>
Agents please report for debriefing on this operation. The director will see you now. Uh, let's let you go first. I, uh, I, uh, yeah. You go ahead. I, go I, ahead. You, you came in, you came into my room or you came to the door of my room. You said, what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> yeah. Uh, funny enough, I enjoyed like the experience of going through the film, but when all the big twists fall, I'm like, what is going on? Um, and then watching it again, I enjoyed it a little bit more the second time. I definitely enjoyed this more than Billion Dollar Brain and the Ape Crest File. This is like a movie that if it was on TV, you know, back in the day when we used to watch TV. I'm totally, I'm so down with what you're laying down. Yeah, like like there was a once upon a time in the ancient days when we would turn on the TV and just watch stuff that was on instead of just like streaming whatever we wanted. If, if this movie came on again, I, I would sit through it and enjoy Because really, the traveling moments are nice. The the interactions with They're everybody fun. are kind of nice. The planes, trains, and automobiles part is really, yeah. really kind of cool. I, I really wanted John Candy in this movie. That's, I, I just wanted him to say, like, uh, you know, there's helium in the earrings, and it makes them lighter, you know? I, <laughs> I, I just wanted a moment like that. But, um, uh but overall, I'm I I don't I'm I'm still really confused about this movie. Uh, but I I did enjoy. It. I'm looking at our chart. I can't see our numbers for Ipcrest File and Billion Dollar Brain. I just remember it being really low. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with the three on this one because it's not the best thing I've ever seen. I wouldn't really recommend it unless it's like on. You know what I mean? I know. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's where I'm trying to set my threes at is, is like, okay, so it used to be, like you said, there used to be a time when you're just clicking through channels and you're like, okay, I could watch this, you know, yeah. lie on the couch. <laughs> it's a Sunday. It's a Sunday afternoon. I want something to watch. If it's something that's just like barely there and you're fine, I'm like, it's a three. These days, the equivalent of that, since I have so much access to streaming and so much control over what I can watch, is I have to think about being at my parents' house where they don't have the streaming services <laughs> and where you're you're going through like their fucking cable channel and they've got like 900 channels and like everything you see that you, you think, oh, yeah, I want to watch that. It's like, oh, yeah, not available in your area or this <laughs> or, or whatever. You know, this is not part of your package. You get up right, there, yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so, like, now my three is, like, that sweet spot where I'm like, okay, I'm tired of searching. This is acceptable. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I'll yeah. go, but I'll take it down one notch from there. I'll okay. take it one notch down. With that being my my threshold, uh, I see a bunch of movies I've given to three that I totally stand by. Uh, this has got to drop down one to two point five for me. Okay, uh, just just a little below that threshold. I don't need to see this movie again. Uh, I would keep searching. <laughs> you know like even if i had even if i had already looked through like 50 channels looking yeah. for something if yeah. this was the thing i would be like okay maybe put a bookmark in it if this is the best thing i can find maybe yeah, but i'm yeah. gonna keep looking right <laughs> right all right so uh so yeah close close on it's you know it's just it's just mid it's just a fucking mid tier movie we agree on that yeah. let's give it uh let's let's quickly get through our cuz i think we've gone longer on this movie than i would really like to be right uh, yeah i feel you <laughs> uh as quickly as i can my best trade crafts i struggled to find but i'll give number 3 to bulgarian umbrella trick Hey, why not? Oh, and real quick, like even though it's not the right uh side that she would be on, uh like it's the right age, I could totally see Alice being the fucking little lady with the Bulgarian oh, umbrella yeah, yeah. trick, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I think Alice has become our favorite character it, it, across the spy genre. I, I fucking love her so much. <laughs> yeah, she's like the best. I, like, I really, really, if there's anybody out there that knows anybody, or if you're like somebody in film, uh, please make this happen. We want an all Alice origin stories and then Alice the, the later years. I, I just want to see it happen because we she's, we, she's we want it all. Yeah, we want <laughs> Alice Alice the Nazi hunter. <laughs> yeah, give it, give it to us now. Uh, my number two best trade craft goes to the the one part of Dumbledore's plan that does kind of make a little bit of sense to me, which is hiring Harry Palmer as the Fall Guy. Indistinct. Uh, differentiation from a uh, billion dollar brain where there, it made no sense that he was involved whatsoever. My number one best goes to the movie. I just liked watching a, a, a botched honey trap by a naive and an inexperienced agent. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know, I mean, you could give the trade crap, you could give some of it to, I mean, you could give the plus five points to Palmer for spotting it. But I mean, come on, dude. It's me, a fucking Sarah, and you're Michael fucking King, dude. Yeah. She she did not she did not see you down the train car and just go like, oh, I gotta slice myself a piece off of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking transparent. Yeah, kind of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. What about your best? My best tradecraft number three was the doll and the passport. Not so much Alex's plan, because that's all my worst. Uh, but just planting something unbeknownst to someone that you're pretty sure is going to make it across with them. And they were, and it would be delivered. I, I like the passport more than the doll, um, considering he basically threw him in a train where a guy is working against him. Um, uh, but I, I did like the idea of planting something uh, like unbeknownst to Palmer. Um, my second number two best trade craft was Greg playing the drug dealer so well that the big reveal that he was DA seemed so ridiculous. So I had to give it up to him. And then my number one best trade craft was the Palmer mafia deal. I like that. You know, there's a big situation. I don't want the heroin to get out, but I also don't want the mafia to get it. So I'm going to call the mafia and the police and save my friends and that's going to be my super team. I like it. <laughs> my number three worst is the Chechens. Uh, this is the this is the most blatant example I can think of of just random guys showing up shooting at a spy hero for no fucking reasons whatsoever <laughs> that I have seen outside of an Austin Powers movie. It's bad. Yeah. Number two, uh, for now, this was the complicated one, and I just explained it, so I won't explain it again. But this whole like passport reveal, like, if you think it through, it's bullshit. Number one, worst <laughs> competition for the crown, Craig taking Mia Sarah hostage as a means to get into the meeting with Sue makes no goddamn sense whatsoever <laughs> and and mic drop i accomplished my mission i set out to make dumbledore's plan not in my top three do you think i do you think i landed the plane i, I think you landed it pretty well the chat right. were very bad uh yeah and all of these are pretty bad um i still don't know why they were after palmer Unless Sue hired them. But don't start. Don't place. start. Don't start. Yeah. It will not yeah. go to a good place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the more you think about this movie, the more you will hate it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, uh, my worst tradecraft, all three of them, is Alex's plan. Um, as much as I like the passport and doll being planted... It's still a big risk, especially the doll, especially since my number two worst trade craft is nobody is aware that they're all working for Dumbledore. So now you're setting up two guys that are working against each other 
and one of them has to have this fucking doll that he's not going to carry on his person. Uh, and then, of course, leading into my number one worst tradecraft, Alex is playing again. Everybody has to play their part exactly, which means Alex has to, and who we've been calling Dumbledore, uh, has to be an absolute genius social engineer to where he could just just predict everyone's behavior to such a like insane autistic degree that it's going to work out when you got like five players in the mix. It's bullshit. Anyway, uh, Alex is pan. Terrible. Really bad. I hated it. Uh, moving on. Uh, here's a big note for me. What is, what is this? Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'll remind you about it. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so park benches? Yeah. Oh, no. I got it. I have an opening bid for park benches. Oh, yeah, definitely. I want to hear it. Well, let's, how about, I, I don't know if this works on the internet, but can we do like a, a three, two, and then both say it at the same time? Let's try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's just see if it works. Okay. I only just now thought of it. Okay. So, so I'm going to say three, two, and then we say the number, right? Okay. okay. So we're saying it on one or on zero? On one. I'll say okay. three, two, number. Okay. Okay. Which in this case is going to be maybe slightly confusing because my number is going to be a fucking one. Okay, let's go. So let's is go. mine. <laughs> so right. Three, two, one. One. Yes, it's a fucking one. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a total one. Yeah, I like it more than our man Flint. I, th- I think it's more spot. Yeah. More park benches than Spy Kids or Our Man Flint. Right. Mom- Those are our point fives. Those are the only times yeah. we've ever dipped below a one. Uh, what are wh- what kind of a, a category are we in here? We're in the spies like us. Ooh, tomorrow never dies. We yeah. were harsh on that one. And the spy who loved me. <laughs> and the man who knew too little. So these are, this is, Get Smart has more park benches. Absolutely, it does. Yeah. Mission Impossible Three has more park benches. Yeah, <laughs> almost everything has more park benches. All right, Dave, love it. Um, let's talk quickly about uh, what's coming up. Although we haven't sealed the deal on this stuff, so let's not super commit. But here's my idea: um, old horses or Slow Horses with Gary Oldman and Jonathan Price is currently being released on... Um... Jonathan Price is in it? Yeah. Oh, shit. I was just I was already mm-hmm. excited just for Gary Oldman. And I think uh, we got also... I saw Olivia something. I think she was in Night Manager. So, but definitely Slow Horses. Uh, Dave and I will still have a conversation about whether or not we're going to do bullet or uh, midnight in st petersburg i am going to vote no in that conversation (laughs) but we'll see if he can uh convince me i think we've got uh better stuff we could do david if our audience is just fucking has a burning desire there's a spy movie or spy television show out there that they're like, why haven't Todd and Dave covered this yet? What <laughs> should they do with that pent up energy? Definitely shoot us an email at spieslikeus.net uh, or shoot us a tweet, spies underscore like us, or you can jump on our Facebook page, which I think is our most active um we get messages and we get comments and likes pretty frequently there you can yell at us over there facebook.com slash spies like us podcast also if this is your first time listening please go check out our older episodes we have covered an eclectic spectrum of spy content um and if you haven't subscribed already um on your favorite podcast app search for spies like us podcast oh, dude really really button. Really quick, I'm so glad you mentioned, uh, you know, how much stuff we have covered over the last now, uh, you know, over two years. Uh, You know, I was doing some work on the on the on the spreadsheet. I think I think we just passed our 100th episode. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll see you next week, David. Hey, Mora, run Protocol 9. Protocol 9 initiated. This podcast will self-destruct in 20 seconds. The preceding transmission sampled the songs Ice Cold by Audio Nautics, Enter the Party by Kevin McLeod, and sound effects from freesound.org. Attributions and links are found at spieslikeus.net. Editing by Todd Hostetler.